It's time we talked about one of my favorite films that I saw at South by Southwest, Francis Ferguson. Welcome to the Film Threat Podcast. I am Chris Gore. I am pleased to have on the show today Bob Byington, who is the director, writer-director of the film Francis Ferguson, which is a movie that I saw at South by Southwest and loved, simply fell in love with. I mean, we were talking before we started this that I... I, I it actually will go to the top of the stack if I see a film and the running time is like 70 or 80 minutes. I think that that's like, I know that sounds strange, but I feel like I don't think I've ever seen a, a short film that I could say, oh, that was, I wish that was longer. Uh, right. your, your films are like, you, you get right to the meat uh, uh, of, of the story. They get in, they entertain, they get out. And I and I really wish that like, like a good dinner party, I wish it could have gone on longer. I don't think audiences really like setups that much. I, I think they'd rather just like, you know, get things going, right? Well, it's true. And that certainly happens with Francis Ferguson, which um, I mean, it's almost, I mean, what you deal with in the film is, is pretty amazing because it's ripped from the headlines, you know, teachers having relations with uh, underage students. So yeah. salacious so material. It is, it is salacious. It's not played salaciously in the film though. The way it's, no. play, it's played in a, in a, a, a very it, it, subtle, respectful way. Um, and, and respectful. Resp yes. It's what is it respect? <laughs> I think it respects the audience, the intelligence no. of the audience. Yeah, I think so. You don't need to see anything graphic in this, right? Well, I don't really know how to do that stuff anyway, so that worked out. Um, it, it worked out great. Yeah. But it's a really good, great co collaborative effort um, with your lead actress. She's um, great, yeah. Can you talk about working with her and, and developing this project? Yeah, well, I had seen Kaylee... Um, in something i actually saw her in a student film and thought she was kind of it was just something i wanted to pursue and i ended up i started a workshop a short with her which i've never made a short so i don't really know what i was doing but um i had the impulse to workshop this character with her and then we ultimately once uh i started reading about the teachers we call them the teachers uh getting in trouble we decided to move the relationship comedy short into an environment where she was one of the teachers mm -hmm. and getting in trouble for that. Mm -hmm. So that's really how that went from A to B. What, um, I mean, that's what's strange about the film while it deals with some dark and serious subject matter. I mean, she's incarcerated. She's having these fights with her husband. Um, there it, it, it's, it's, it's also funny. That's what's there's, there's just, there's a great tone that you strike with this film and just, you know, um, having spent some time with you and, and whatnot, I, I feel like you have a very dry sense of humor. I, I've heard. Yeah. But you know, everyone has like their own sense of humor. Right. And, um, we all have our own sense of humor. So I don't think we perceive our sense of humor as cultivated or, you know, it, it just kind of is what it is. So, I see things a certain way. I don't try to dry them out or make them terse or deadpan. I just like, I just make the content kind of the way I see it. And um, the movies do tend to get labeled as deadpan. And that probably has to do like a big film for me when I was younger is Hal Hartley's Trust. I think that impacted me. Aki Karzamaki is a big director for me. So I think these guys kind of, you know, did a number on me. And I gravitate toward a certain type of, of um, setting of a scene and a type of performance. Well, it, it certainly seems that Kaylee uh, and you are on exactly the same page throughout this. How much how much of a collaboration was it when you were? Um, I mean, you shot at a you shot at a real courthouse in prison, from what I understand. Yeah, and Kaylee, you know, Kaylee had an ability to make me laugh, and I tended to kind of respond to that and try to be like. I think this woman is funny and I'm going to make a movie about this woman who makes me laugh. And that was really the germ of the idea, I think. Well, and, 
Yeah, like what is your screenwriting process? Uh, do you care to like talk about like how you um I I always find it fascinating when a writer will say, "Well, I just use, you know, a spiral bound notebook or whatever." Um like where do you go to a certain place? Do you mind talking about that? Uh well, I just wrote a script between March 15 and April 10 when the pandemic was coming down. I mm -hmm. I'd never written a script in final draft. I'd always done what you're saying where I would sort of write things and then transfer them later. This is the first script I just sat down and kind of went chronologically through the story and composed in final draft. But um, Francis was a little bit more like we had the idea for the story and I knew kind of what it was going to be and why it was going to be. And then we wor worked with a writer and kind of retrofitted the script, you know, not the most efficient way to go, but yeah. What um, did you in in shooting in these real locations? How did that like, you know, how did that add to or even create problems um, when you're in production? Well, we had gone deliberately to this small town in Nebraska because we knew that we could get these types of locations. So I had shot stuff in Austin, and Austin had started to be a place where you're going to have to give them real money to shoot in a courthouse and um <laughs> we had you know we had gone to this courthouse we were sort of location scouting and they were they had shown us the main courthouse and they had said we you can use this if you want it gets there's a little bit of activity here we'll, we'll kind of work around and then we go up the stairs and they're like this is the second courthouse we don't really use this if you want to use it and it was just like being invited to your own studio to you know shoot a movie it was nuts and i thought they were pranking me i mean i i was had the sensation that they were going to tell me they were kidding but we just had that kind of experience all over north platte it was a town really hungry for a, a little movie to come in and and uh so i would recommend to filmmakers rather than shooting in a place like austin go 100 miles you know north of austin to a town that's never had a movie and and they'll love you did, were you guys kind of when during the course of the film did you kind of become mini celebrities in that town? I'm just gonna. We guess. did. We did. I got my I got my wish to be uh, famous, and uh, you know, surprise! It's you know, it's not that fun. <laughs> well, we. I mean, look, we're living at a time now where there's a sort of wholesale rejection of everything that celebrity represents, right? Mm. I mean, that's during the Are pandemic. We? that's something that we've discovered is, is that, you know, um, singing imagine is not going to heal or help anything. Yeah. It's that was gonna, a misfire. Wasn't it? Uh, that was beyond a misfire. I mean, that was, that was a whole scale disaster. I mean, it's, I, it's, it just tells you like how, I mean, look, I live, um, I live in Pasadena, which is just on the outskirts, right? I'm sure. close enough where if I need to go into Hollywood for any reason, not any reason anymore. Um, there are no movie theaters open, um, including my beloved Alamo Draft House, which just opened in downtown Los Angeles. Um, right. But I'm right on right on the edge of it. But the, really, it's not. I mean, LA is not a walking city. It's not. Um, it's not really friendly to independent filmmakers. Um, if anything, uh, it might be good for casting because you're mm. liable to run into, say, a Greg Grunberg at the grocery store. It's well, it's, it's funny because I've asked a couple people, you know, you have this kind of faith in movies and an excitement about watching movies. You're still excited to go to the Alamo and watch a movie. And I think that's kind of amazing because you've been watching movies for so many years. I would think you would get kind of jaded and you don't really seem to be jaded about it. You still seem excited about that experience. And Yes, uh, I am. I, how I, have you I, managed? I um, I'm kind of like, you know, when people say, are you a foodie? Mm -hmm. I'm not a foodie. I don't care about food. I, right. eat, I eat food so I don't die. Right. No, like, I'm kind seriously, of the same way. I just, I just don't care. Like it doesn't matter to me. So when I have friends, Oh, you don't appreciate this is such great sushi. It's like, I don't give a shit. I don't care. Right. It doesn't right. matter. I couldn't, you know, good food, bad food doesn't matter. I just want to not die. I am a media junkie. I, mm -hmm. whether it's comic books, movies, um, and I, in particular, love that sense of discovery. Now, if mm -hmm. you go to the regular the movie theater to see whatever big budget film the studios have 
crafted for you after it's gone through so many cooks. It's just gentrified into appealing to everyone or it checks off certain boxes. I find that experience to be soul sucking. What, right. I found, what I find amazing is to see films like films made by someone like yourself or see a film by a new indie filmmaker who made a short film. That's like, I look, I look on a lot of these indie films. I'm, I see made by first time filmmakers. It's kind of like a bird with a broken wing, you know, like I want to, I want to kind of, I want to, I want the bird to heal. I want it to fly away and out of its nest and into the world. And I know that it's, that the performances are not great, that the acting has flaws there's something wrong with the third act always there's you know what i mean there's like this certain check things where i can go like there's something always wrong with um a lot of these first time indie movies but i love that i love yeah. that um discovering some something new and fresh and um i mean your film francis ferguson has like that kind of freshness i think mm-hmm. i think a lot of that comes from the collaboration between you and kaylee was just so unique it and, is unique, yeah. Yeah, and that's yes, but yes, I have an unbridled optimism that can be annoying sometimes. Well, um, that's great because most people will turn a movie off if they see the kind of thing you're talking about. If they see a clanger performance or if they see a story problem, a lot of people, you know, flip the 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 Roku or the uh, the Fire Stick right away. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of that way too. Like if you violate me a few times during your little indie. Um, I've had a couple experiences recently, like I watched Death of Dick Long, which I liked, and I watched Butt Boy, which I liked, and they both had a kind of wonderful, um, like they were movies made with low budgets, they were made intelligently, they had some of the warts you're talking about, but they just had such spirit, and I just loved them. You know, I'm not on here to plug movies, you know, for you to watch instead of Francis Ferguson, but I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I was so excited by Butt Boy, even though it just, it has a lot of like things that you're not going to see make the final draft of a movie that's run through a studio system. And it almost made me like it more. Well, first of all, I love that we're talking about Butt Boy, a film mm-hmm. I have not seen, which got a great review on the film threat, uh, filmthreat.com website. But I have seen the trailer and it seems like it would make a great double feature with a movie called Dead Dicks, which I recommend <laughs> Dead Dicks. Right. It's um, a guy, um, I, I don't want to give too much away. Just look up this film, Dead Dicks. <laughs> uh, just visually, there's a scene where- After you watch Francis Ferguson, Francis, look up Dead Dicks. Francis Ferguson, Butt Boy, <laughs> and Dead Dicks are your triple feature for the weekend. And Dead Dicks, I'll just, just visually, there's a scene where a guy crawls out of a, a, a vagina-like, crack that appears in his wall with no explanation it just looks like there is a six foot vagina in his bedroom wall and he crawls through in any case dead dicks would be a good based on what i know about butt boy which i've only i'm gonna be i've only seen the trailer for butt boy well butt boy has this staggeringly low imdb rating but then it's also got a new york times critics pick it's a very it, to say it divides audiences, but it's got a smart kind of fresh comic thing going that I, I responded to. It's got a lot of weird story. Not, I don't want to say problems, but there were things in the script that, that they executed with limited means. And you kind of got to go with it a little bit. And I did. Well, I, I, I appreciate movies like that. I, I'd rather see a film like that. I'd rather see a flawed indie that's trying to do something that's never been done rather than some by the number studio picture, which to me is like subsisting on a, a fast food diet. I know we were talking about food earlier. I, 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 I eat it just so I don't die. But, um, but fast food is just, if you live on fast food, you don't know what a, what a good steak is. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. Know, to me, a really good indie film is like a steak and like a movie like whatever the latest Star Wars movie was is, is like fast food. I know I have all this crap behind me. I'm an old school Star Wars fan. Um, they've mm-hmm. kind of lost me recently. Right. But but um, but uh, back to Francis Ferguson, we need to talk about the fact that it's coming to Alamo. And, and you know what? This is a plug. And I don't care because part of the reason someone is listening to this or watching the Film Threat podcast is to, to discover new films. In the Alamo Draft House, which I've known Tim League for years, he is such a supporter of indie film. Yeah, he's he created, is. He's created an app that 
you know, in lieu of the draft houses across the country being closed, um, there is an app that you can download. Uh, you can just look up, you can just look up Alamo draft house or draft house, whatever. And if you enter the offer code South by Southwest, you get a discount, um, for the, for the draft house. It's SXSW, uh, download the Alamo draft house app to go to on demand drafthouse.com slash film slash Francis Ferguson, or just look up Francis Ferguson on the app. This app is like a curated, amazing library of indie film, including Francis Ferguson, which comes out on the app. Uh, when does it's it come out now. on the app? It's there now. It's there now. So that's awesome. So you can, so you can see it there, but, um, and yeah, the, the code is, yeah, the code's not going to last forever. So you kind of got to hit that code ASAP, uh, or you're going to end up paying for the movie. Well, I think, I think we're living in this sort of strange golden age. I think that one of the, um, one of the good things that's happened out of the pandemic is it's allowed us the opportunity to look beyond the traditional mainstream studio releases and start to actually consume, you know, independent films that I think have just much more value, such as Francis Ferguson and Butt Boy and Dead Dicks. These are right. the movies. That's the triple feature that you and I are recommending. Well, every year I go to Michael Moore's film festival in Traverse City and all these um, people go to see this festival content he's curated. And I was like, man, why are these people here at this festival? And they're just hungry for the type of content you're talking about. And now granted he gets, you know, great movies from all over the world. And, um, but I could just tell that the audiences were like literally starved for stuff that they, you know, hadn't seen, but could trust, you know, as not a waste of their time. And I think the Alamo site is similar because they, you know, it's gone through a, a curating process like you're talking about. And, and Tim league is, I think pretty hands-on about how it is curated and he's just smart about movies. He definitely is. I mean, um, this draft house in Los Angeles, I can't, the, the minute it opens, I'm going, I have no fear of this, uh, pandemic. I'll wear, I'll wear a mask for the same reason I wear pants because it's socially acceptable. I don't want to fight anybody. I'm not right. like a, I'm not like a half mask guy where you see those people with their chin masks. I'm full up nose on the mask. Okay. Nice. That's what, that's, that's, that's what I do. So um, uh, in any case, in fact, I'll show you one. I'll show you a recent mask I got. You just have to see this. It's right. Here. Okay. I just got this. I just got this mask. I got this mask on Etsy and it's, it's a face hugger from the alien film. If you could see, I just got it on Etsy. I'm sure you can look up face hugger and check it out, but, but I'm a full on mask guy. I'm just going to the draft house. He, Tim league has, um, he has these giant French posters for all sorts of bizarre exploitation films from the seventies and eighties. So if you have an opportunity, go to the draft house in Los Angeles and check it out. Um, Bob, I'm so happy. We got to talk not just about I'm, your film, Francis Ferguson, yeah. But and if you hate yeah, if you hate Butt Boy, I'm sorry. And I um I warned you that you might hate it. So don't be like, hey, you wasted my time. It's free <laughs> it's free on Amazon Prime, so I didn't waste your money. Um and I certainly didn't expect to come on here and plug Butt Boy, but forgive the sort of pun there, but I uh I just liked it. Well, I think what'll be interesting will be to if you're if you watch this interview with Bob and I, uh, our conversation on YouTube, you will see you're definitely going to see the captions, the subtitles, and you're going to see the word butt boy quite often. So that link is going to expire uh, August nine. So you got to get on there by August nine. We okay. So then we got to We got to. I got to rush this podcast out. The I link's not going to expire. The um the code the free. The, the offer code. Expire. Okay, yeah. cool. Either way, either way, if the offer code expires, you you happened upon this. Doesn't matter. You need to go to you need to go to the Alamo Draft House uh, app, and and just I mean, this stuff is not this stuff is also not expensive on the app. They've made it like like you know, it's less than the cost of a movie ticket to to rent these films. It's, They've it's, got a lot of great stuff on there for three bucks, and it's hard to you know, it's hard to go wrong. It's fantastic. Uh, but Bob, I want to thank you for being okay, Chris. on the Film Threat Podcast. I also have to thank our sponsor. We actually have a sponsor, storyblocks.com. If you go to storyblocks.com slash film threat, sign up. You're supporting this show. You're supporting uh, independent filmmakers in this show. And also you'll have access to all of these tools to make to make your own movies, music, sh stock footage, all that. 
since you hate food, you could get like a bologna purveyor or something or some like non-food type sponsor too. Since you don't care. This is yeah. I don't care about. I will just take any food sponsor. You take a bologna sandwich. I remember Larry David saying he didn't care whether he had a bologna sandwich or a two hundred dollar sushi meal. So he feels the same way about food that I do. Like I just you don't can look it up. It. You'll look it really? up. Yeah, he just he's like, what's the difference? There's no difference. Yeah, I just like I said, I eat food so I'm not dead, and then I can continue to go see movies. Um, Bob, it's such a pleasure to have you on the show. Um, Thank you, Chris. Everything you do is 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 you have to see it, consume it, and savor it. It's well, just, I wish uh, you I wish you spoke for the general population, but I'll take what I can get. Great, thanks for being on the Film Threat Podcast. All right. Thank you.